the way they propel themselves is they take water in through their mouth and they squirt it out their rear ends. Really? To do that. So that's him right there. Okay, yeah. I've got a See good that? shot See of that? him. Yeah, yeah. See how he's squirting yeah. the water out? That's very cool. Yeah, that's how they... Oh, that's... what's this swimming towards him, Robert? Yeah, that's a... Yeah. Spotted sedge is what that is what that's called as an adult. I'm gonna put that caddis in the alcohol. Hey, this is Robert Younghands, and he is a bug entomologist, better known as the bug guy. Robert, how you doing? I'm doing well. Doing what well, are you Sandy. doing here today? Just doing this, some sampling, some river sampling. And and uh, is this for fly fishing? Yeah, you know uh, the core of fly fishing is understanding what the trout foods are and how to imitate them. And the only way you can imitate the trout foods through through pattern selection of flies is to know what's actually in the river and to understand their different life cycles and what food sources are available to trout. I often say that you can have an $850 pair of waders and fancy boots and, and all kinds of nice equipment, but if you don't know what trout are eating and what patterns to use, it doesn't make a difference that you have the top of the line stuff. First and foremost is understanding what's going on within the aquatic ecosystem. And once you get that down, then you start to understand, hey, what should I tie on the end of my, my fly rod? What, should, what type of pattern should I use? And the best way to do that is to go in and do some sampling. So Robert, when they tell us match the hatch, is that what you're doing here? Yeah, they they yeah. say match the hatch when we're fly fishing. Is if, that you? if it's a hatch, actually I'll use an aerial net if they're actually literally hatching and collect the adults that are flying around in the air. Uh, but otherwise we're kind of really matching the nymphs and the larva, of the immature stages when we're nymphing doing subsurface. So yes, we match the hatch, but we're also really matching more so what's in the river because fish, they say fish do 90% of their feeding subsurface, you know, inside, underneath, below the water, either in the river or a lake. I'd say it's even probably higher than that. Fly fishing is biology and it's physics. It's those two things. So show us what you've brought with you today. Yeah, I just brought, I brought some equipment. I brought some vials here. And, and uh, a lot of times if you're on the water, you can just use uh, your hemostats. Okay. And I have a vial. This just has 70% isopropyl, which is fine. That's cheap. You can get that at, you know, any, any drugstore for okay. next to nothing. And then I bring a tray. And I don't always bring this when I'm, when I'm actually fishing. This is only when I'm actually just doing collecting and like I'm doing a survey today. Okay. So, um, and I'll fill that with water and I'll put some specimens in it. Maybe we can look at some of those a little bit later. And then they're going to go in that little jar thing. Yeah. And then okay. once I collect them and then I'll, uh, and I use the same and this is a, this is an expensive saying. Oh, we can to... see through the bottom. I can, so there's actually a, a net right yeah, here. Yeah. This is really thick mesh. Okay. And this, th these, these sayings that we use for scientific purposes are about $175. They're very wow. expensive. But the average fly fisher can buy just uh, what I like is the landing net saying uh, made by Wind River Gear. They're out of Erie, Colorado. As we fish, we can actually be saining as we fish to see what we're, yes. what's in the water and what the bugs might, yeah, the fish might be eating right exactly. then. Exactly. And all you have is this little mesh bag that folds up to the size of a pack of cards and you put it back in your, in your pocket when you're done. And you can also use it as an aerial net just as long as you have a landing net that you can put it on. So you just put it over the landing net, cinch it down, go in, collect some bugs. And if you see a hatch, you can actually use it as an aerial net and actually collect some bugs. And that way you're not looking like that crazy person, I always say, that's going like this all the time. Trying, trying to catch to them in their things. hands. In a little while, we're going to actually see you collecting the bugs, and we'll come back to that in a bit. Thanks a lot, Robert. Yeah, thanks, Sandy. I really appreciate your life. So, so, Robert, you like, okay, so this pan here, you filled it up with water. Right. Okay, and you got your, like, net, like you're going to catch a butterfly or something. Yeah, this is a saying. Okay. And what I'm going to do is go into the river, and I'm going to turn over some rocks, and we're going to collect some specimens, and then we're going to put them in the tray. Okay. We want to put them in the tray because that way we can see what we've collected, and, and we want to see movement. We want to see these bugs moving around. Okay, and so what do we have here? And then we have a, we have a scintillation vial. It's basically just a glass vial that has, that has ethyl alcohol in it. Okay. And we're going to... Uh, take specimens that we collect and we're going to actually put them in the vials and have those um, those vials uh, filled with specimens and that way we know what we've collected and we'll usually put a date on it and where we collected it and things like that so we have a log of where we've collected the bugs that we've actually collected. Okay, so what's the next step? What are we going to do? You're going to so get yeah, in the water I'm gonna, here? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in the water and just and do what we call a kick. Okay. And so I'm just going to come in and just move some, move some rocks around. And, uh, just kind, of, just kind of disturb the bottom a little bit. 
and see what we can so that net there that same thing you're kicking the bugs into that's exactly right okay and then do you have some already yeah we already have we have a, really? a few little things in there okay so robert when we're doing this how many bugs are we trying to get into the uh net here is there any certain amount you're trying to get no just as, just really just as many as we can so let me um, as far as that goes so let me see what we have so far in our net and see and that's one reason we have a tray because there's a lot of bugs in there but you can't see them real well because okay until i get them into the into the tray then i'm going to turn this over and i'm going to put the specimens in here check the outside for specimens and this this didn't yield a, a lot of bugs here but we do have some we have a nice brown drake there that's called a hydrocycid and they make little houses oh you know what we got that's what? really special that is dragonfly nymph it's called a gonfid there's only one dragonfly in Colorado that lives in moving water and that's the nymph of the dragonfly right there and those are kind of rare to actually can you, find. Can you show me that again? Where's where'd it go? Usually, what I'll do is I'll just take it here, okay. and I'll, I'll. Uh, there's something that's kind of cool about them. The way they propel themselves is they take water in through their mouth and they squirt it out their rear ends. Really? And they'll actually see if we can get him to do that. So that's him right there. Okay, yeah. I got a see good that? shot see of that? him. Yeah, yeah. See how he's squirting yep. the water out? That's very cool. Yeah, that's how they. Oh, that's, what's this swimming towards him, Robert? Yeah, that's a caddis. that's a caddis, and those make little houses. Those are okay. re, those are retreat making caddises, and they make these little houses, and they um, they live inside them, and then in about ten months they put a door on their little house. They build them with rocks and sticks, and then they turn oh. that into a cocoon, and that eventually turns into an adult caddis, which is basically almost like an aquatic moth. This um, mayfly here, this 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 brown this this. Um, this uh, we call them kind of March Browns. We know it's a mayfly because it has the, th the three distinct tails, um, very flat and dorsally. But that's a very nice specimen right there. They're gonna we're gonna find those in fast water. You're, you're, um, there's a, there's another one there, yeah, and then there's a. Just so and, then, Robert, you get all these bugs, and then you're going to put them in these little jars here. Yeah, and then I put them in vials. There's okay. a nice. Uh, let me get out of the sun here. There's a nice little red midge larva right there. Bright red. It's full of hemoglobin. Did you? Okay, so point to him again. But you can see that right there. So you can yeah. find those guys in fast water. Pretty much uh, in the slower water and the fast water both. Okay, point to him again because I. Uh... He's right there. So that's why we have a lot of red flies. And this is kind of special. I do want to point this out. I'll, I can put this in my hand. We're having a great trico hatch today, and that's a trico nymph right there. Oh wow! Look at that. Everyone knows what a trico looks like for the most part. That fly fishes, especially here, since that's a big hatch. Um, but that's what the trico nymph actually looks like, and that's important because sometimes the trico hatch is coming off and they're not taking the adults, and so. But you know that they're eating, so maybe you want to go ahead and tie, you know, a small pheasant tail on there, something like that. So you can see they're kind of robust. They're kind of a thick, kind of a fat body. And then you'll notice the ones that are swimming really fast. Um, those are your blue wing olives. See what I wanted here? I'll grab a specimen here, and I'm going to grab this nice little spotted sedge. Is what that is what that's called as an adult. I'm going to put that caddis in the alcohol. Make sure the lid's on tight. Normally, I would have a label, and I would say that what river I'm on, what the date is, and when I collected it, what county I'm in. And if, especially if I like to tie, I have a model for tying up that particular specimen. So then when we tie, Robert, the idea is we're trying to tie a fly that matches yeah. what you're seeing in that jar. Anything okay. in the jar and also in the and also in the, in the trays here. Maybe you're not even tying, maybe you're just trying to figure out what fly you want to use. But, and he's really, he's really doing his little thing here. It's, the bigger ones are funny. Like I say, they're like little jet boats. And I often say that if you can take water and drink it in your mouth and squirt it out your rear end and swim, then you should probably quit your day job and join the circus because that's, um, that's a pretty talented, a really ta talented adaptation. But they burrow, so they don't do a lot of swimming, but when they do, and that'll, that'll get as big as a quarter. Okay, and that, so, and that, you're pretty funny too, Robert. So once again, Robert Younghands, the bug guy. Get his video, www.bugguy.com, right? You got it. You okay, got it. Robert, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. You're definitely educating us. Thanks, Andy.